Hey, yeah, YouTubers, Taz Man here, bringing you another episode of Taz Teaches Java. And uh, in our last episode, we created this words uh, class for holding all our words, and we created this ginormous array here. Now, um, I was thinking about this, and this really isn't a very efficient way, and this is actually kind of good in a way, because it's going to help us get into another thing uh, that I wanted to talk about, because we've talked a lot about uh, different components of Java, but one is with the input-output, all we've done is, you know, getting keyboard input and stuff. But I wanted to look a little bit real quick into uh, accessing a file, because that's always very handy to be able to do in Java or well any programming language for that matter uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to maybe go ahead and stick some carriage returns here we might end up just getting rid of this but for the time being we're going to comment it out so there we go this is now commented out so it doesn't have any kind of file it's going to access so what we want to do is one we need to create a file and uh, right here you can see this is our location of our file so what we want to do is maybe just create one in here called word list mm, yeah that works and we'll just make it be a text file is fine w-o-r-d-l-i-s-t uh, dot txt so that's fine we're going to open it up with notepad like so Oh, really big. And then I'm going to go ahead and get all the things. So the difference between this word list and the other word list is, can we go ahead and turn on word wrap? All I did was remove the quotes. Like if we look at this word list uh, right here, everything has quotes and then a comma, where with this one, I simply removed all the quotes um, so that it's just a nice long list and as you can see it's the exact same list we had before uh, but just condensed and it's going to be comma delimited so we're going to go ahead and save that do a shave do, 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 save all right so now that we've got that what we need is its path so if we come in here actually yeah yeah that's fine uh, let's go ahead and do, uh, what am I doing? Think, think, think. We need our path. No, that's not the one. There we go. So this is the path right here. So as you can see, it's on my D drive in the Tasman folder, WS Eclipse Java, Taz Teaches Source Hangman. And then we want word list at the end. So we'll just type this and type WO and hit down arrow once and then we can highlight that and copy it we shouldn't need that anymore so what we want to do is set up our system now so that we can actually access uh, an external file and so the first thing we're going to do is let's just create a priva private we're going to basically call it the exact same as this guy down here so we don't have to change anything up top and we're not actually going to need to return anything. So we're going to do a void instead of the string array. And we're going to call it get list. There we go. All done. <laughs> so now we talked a little while ago about mutable and immutable uh, data types. And a string, for example, is a immutable data type. Is that right immutable it can't be changed so if I create a string called Tasman and then I concatenate onto it using something like our little pluses or something and I say Tasman on YouTube or if I say Tasman on uh, what it does is it actually the pointer that the string is using will now point to a new string called Tasman on and then when I concatenate that last piece on YouTube it would unpoint or stop pointing to the Tasman on one and it would create a new one called Tasman 
on YouTube. So if we look at this, if this were like a string and we were concatenating it, basically the first chunk of memory would be able. Then it would say, oh, but I need to add about on there. So then it would create a new chunk of memory with able and about. Now the able still exists and it exists until the garbage collector comes around and collects it and frees up that memory. However, if we have something this long, basically every time we concatenate a next piece on, whoops, it will actually be that. And so now we're using that much memory that's just being thrown away. And then we're concatenating on that. Hopefully you kind of understand what I'm saying. So string is not very efficient. If you're just doing a single thing and you're not going to change it, string is great. But if you're going to be changing it or concatenating or uh, uh, truncating it, you know, adding to it or uh, taking away from it, you want to use something else. But in this case, with our path, we're just going to say string and we'll call it path. And we're going to say equals, and then this will be our path that we just did. Now, because this is Java, uh, it automatically did it for us. But if it didn't, if you come in and you notice that there's only single backslashes, in order to print out the backslash, we have to escape it. Uh, so we use a backslash as the escape character, and then the backslash is what we want to print. There's just a couple of those. Remember that we need like backslash n, backslash t for tab. Uh, backslash quote will allow us to actually print quotes within our string. So this is going to basically translate to d backslash tasman backslash ws eclipse java backslash tas teaches backslash source backslash hangman backslash word list so that's going to actually work out just as we want it to the next thing we're going to need is we're going to need a temporary location um, and this is going to be what we said it's basically kind of be concatenating our thing but luckily we won't be doing it through the whole program we'll just do it here and then when we're done actually hmm let's let's use our other thing let's just try it str a string buffer and we're going to call it equals temp and this way it won't have to create it it just wastes memory so oops not equals temp We'll call it temp and it equals at the beginning. Oh, whoops. So the way you do a string buffer is different. So instead, it's like an object. So we need to just say new string str string buffer. Like so. You're going to give it to me. Give me, give me, give me. Okay, there we go. String buffer. So we can say how big we want it up front we can actually put a string in here for the initial value we're just going to leave it blank which will uh, i believe leave it empty for us so now what we do is we have our path which is not going to change so it's fine to be a string but then we have our temp variable which is going to slowly receive each one of these now if we did that as a string it would do a, a little area that had able then once that was done it would create one called about so we'd end up using up quite a bit of memory not in today's standards but on a slower machine it would end up eating up quite a bit of memory if you don't have a lot to begin with so anytime we're going to access the external file system or uh, do something that has a chance uh, being dependent on something else uh, it's always good to use a try and catch block and I think we learned a little bit about those I can't remember if it was here or in a different thing I did but we're gonna learn just a little bit so what a try and catch block is going to do is it's going to say okay if this fails I'm not going to fail the whole program I'm not gonna totally crash and you know just die I'm actually gonna catch what goes wrong so that we can actually see what happened so we're not too worried about this but the way you do it is you just type try and then you type your condition for your try right and then catches the second part 
kind of like an if and an else if. Now the catch on the other hand does have uh, the parentheses and this is what you're trying to catch. So in this case we're going to catch one called file not found. Uh, let's see, file not found exception and we're going to sign it to E. And there we go. So this is the try and catch block. Um, for this we're just going to do maybe E dot uh, print stack trace. So that will just output the error to the screen, not necessarily closing the program. However, in this case, if it failed, it would kind of close the program because everything in this program is dependent on getting a word list. You can't play hangman without words, right? So here's our try part. This is where we are going to use our scanner. And we're gonna do our control space. Do we already have a scanner object? Oh, we do. So that's why that's not needing to do anything. So we're going to scanner and we'll just call it in like we usually do. And we're going to do a new S scanner. And now normally we just do system.in. However, in this case, we want to access the hard drive or we want to access the file system so we're going to say new and we're going to say file and then we want to stick in our path like that and then because we're using a comma separated or comma delimited list we're going to tell it that we want to use a delimiter so that it's going to say okay so each entry that I take in this in here is going to be um, I, I'm going to separate it in memory that I do. Each comma will enter a new line basically. So our pattern here is going to be, and you'll just have to go with me on this because I don't know how really to es explain it really well, but we're looking for commas and then this is going to do our, remember up here we're escaping, so I, we're escaping our backslash, the S, oh no, I can't remember what I what the S is, I think it goes through all of it, I can't remember, and then the asterisk just means all of it, I can't remember, I'm drawing a complete blank, I wonder if this has, no it doesn't, uh, you can look up the use delimiter and the reg regex uh, formatting and stuff uh, online. I'm not going to go way into it, but this is basically going to take in this thing and they say every time I find a comma, I'm going to enter in a new uh, a carriage return or a new line. So this will make it so instead of being a giant list of just comma separated values, it's going to be one word per line. Or if we, for example, had a phrase in here, because this will do phrases, um, it would do the whole phrase and then a line, as long as we don't have commas in our phrase. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Um, that does mean sometimes you would want to comment in our phrase. We might want to end up changing what our, our delimiter is. Um, I might do that offline and then just tell you what it is because it's not a big deal. Okay, so anyway, let's go ahead and continue on. So now that we've got in this in variable, we have the entire uh, file of data that we have. So now we want to loop through it. So we're going to say while, we're going to use a while loop, and we're going to use our in, and we're going to do this has next. And this is simply going to say, is there an actual value in there? If there is, then it's considered true and it will move on. If we've hit the end of the list, then of course there won't be a next one, so it will exit our loop. And then of course, we always want to close our, our, uh, our guy there. So here we're closing it. Now for some reason this doesn't think we're actually closing it, and I'm not sure why, but we are closing it. So now let's look at what we want to do while we're in our loop. We want to take our temp value, tmp, 
and we want to assign it whatever is in the in value currently. So we're going to say in dot next and this will assign into temp what our value is for in dot next. And then we can do words which is our array from up above remember right here we're assigning well, actually it's up here remember here we were taking it we were assigning it into an array and then we were later on taking our array uh, da, 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 right where's our array, array, array we were taking our array is it in here and we were looping it right here so this is our word list and we were looping through and adding our array. So we won't need this guy anymore because we're doing it directly. In fact, let's go get rid of word list. Just so we don't even, if there's any other word list reference, it will get rid of it for us. So here we have our words. This is our uh, array list. So we're going to add, and we're going to add in temp, right? TMP, like so. However, do we have to do anything special here? I think we might. We might have to do temp uh, dot to string. Because this is a string buffer. Oh, that's a period. This is a string buffer, which is not quite compatible with the string. Oh, but how are we going to do this one? <laughs> I didn't think all of that. Originally, when I was thinking, we were going to do a string, which would work fine. And that's actually, I might have to do it as a string, even though it's wasteful. I don't know. Let's just get it working. We're just going to do this guy as a string, which means this will be a quotes like that which will make this guy happy this guy doesn't need to be there anymore and that should do it I might have to look into that because we want to could I turn this could I do two string on this or no two no because it's already a string we want to switch it to string buffer I'll, I'll have to look into that words are never used which one's words what the method oh we're not using get list yet so now we have to do where we had our original get list which was right up here Uh, we just need to say uh, get lit get list because we're not returning anything with it and we can even get rid of this guy because this is already gonna sign words in there now we should in theory we should be able to try this out we don't have any reds so let's just see if we get a word no Oh, is it because we game Java? So that's so if we're looking at game, words, W. So we're doing that. Get secret word. Do we have a get secret word in here? So return secret word. Oh, because we were assigning get secret here. Get secret, secret words, words. That should work actually. What am I missing here? Let me just think. Do, do, while. It has next. I think this all works. I think we got our list. And this is assigning it directly to words, so we're good there. Um, let's go. So we're getting our list. 
we're sending wordless size, which is our one, uh, to word size, collection shuffle words. Do we need to What are we missing? Set secret. I don't think we're missing anything. And this set secret will probably be more in the, well, this is just set in our secret word. This is, um, do, do, do. So I think it's in this guy, set secret word, word size. Oh, I wonder, because we have strings up here. So there's a couple of these that we're going to want to change, I'm thinking. So uh, right now, our word. Oh, we don't have a word anymore because we deleted it down here. But we do want one up here. So it's going to be a P-R-I-V-A-T private string B-U-F-F-E-R string buffer and this will be word and we're also going to change secret word we want this just to be we're just going to have this be the word that it gets right we want it to be a string buffer so it doesn't take up extra memory so we're going to do new and string buffer and parentheses. So we have that. Ah, da, 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 da. So here we are getting that. We're setting up Word. We don't have Word yet. So see what we're trying to do by set secret. And we're finally leaving this as string because once the words are in there, they're not changing and each is their own uh, element. So we're good there. So now we have our get list. We are getting our size. We're doing collections. I don't think we need this guy right now. Uh, let's see. Then we have set secret. See, this seems, I think I want to change this, I think. Maybe just to get word. And we'll have it return. because. So we're actually setting the secret inside of our guesses, uh, which right now doesn't have anything in it, but that's where we're going to encrypt it. So we do want to return something here. So I'm going to actually change this. We're going to return a S T R I N G B U buffer because this will change periodically. And I'm actually going to change it to get word because it's going to get the word. So then what we want to do is first thing we want to do is clear our word buffer. So in case word already has something in it, we want to say word dot set length. So this is how you clear it out uh, and set it back to zero. So it has nothing in it. The only thing that you can do in this is append and remove. So I could remove individual letters, I can move stuff, um, and I can append to it. So what I want to do is I want to empty that buffer, clean, clean the uh, string buffer out before I try and send something to it. Then I'm going to do word uh, dot append, and then the string that we want to append which is going to be uh, this guy, right? Words get word size minus one. So that, and then we want to still remove from the uh, array that we have, that's words, and we're going to remove that last one as well. And then we need to return, uh, go to end, return, word. So this is kind of prepping for the guesses thing. When we created the other one, it was more or less just so that we could have it here. So we don't need this one anymore. 
So we have our getting word. Um, we're fine with that and that. Yeah, that'll get the current size. That'll get what we originally. Okay, so I think that is all good. So what we want to do is maybe go into our main or our game area. And so here we're getting the secret word. We don't want to do that. We just want to get word, right? I think that's right. Let's see if that runs. No, we're still getting it. So here on new words let's just look at what we're doing public stream buffer uh, no with this one up here public words so we're getting the list which should be this guy right here get list which it's not airing out let's just make sure um, shouldn't be airing out but I kind of feel like it is this we're not really outputting anything so let's just say e -R -R -R, just so we know it's airing out oops then we can troubleshoot it just a little bit better so yeah so we're not getting that scanner paddle let me just verify I've got all this stuff correct so we got scanner path uh, scanner in new scanner new file so scanner new file the path use delimiter dun, 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 that all looks right and we're looping through it in has next it's at temp and we're closing it if we don't do that we catch it that should be all right then let's check up here so this is our array list of words oh 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 oh, oh. maybe it's i think because we got rid of where we were assigning it uh the word so we might need to go equals new ARR array list. Oops, wrong button. There we go, for array list. So I think that might do it. Let's see if that works. Ha ha, there we go. And look, we got a new one. Now, one thing I wanna do, We want to guarantee that our first, I want to show you guys a phrase. So what we're, what I'm going to do is right here, after it's shuffled the words, we're going to put one last one on the end. Words dot, just to show you guys that this will handle uh, a nice big phrase. And I have a pre-written phrase here. That uses almost every single letter which would be a terrible thing. So if you guys don't know, if you do the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, it uses every single letter in the alphabet at least once. So that would be terrible for playing hangman because the person would always be able to, no matter what they guess, they'd get it. Now, this is one thing I was talking about where we're using comma delimited list uh, in our thing. We wouldn't be able to have a comma in our our thing unless do we can we no we wouldn't be able to have a comment in there I don't think um, so we might want to change what our delimiter is maybe to like a tilde because you can set it to anything um, but that would fix that issue for us so if we do this this guarantees because this will be the last element added and when we get our last element when we get our word it's always the last element so now no matter what when I run this I get that exact same thing every time and the only reason I wanted that is one so we can get some spacing and see what it looks like we want to make sure that when we're generating our asterisks that numbers and symbols are not included in that we want to only change it to letters we only, or we only want letters to change so this is looking pretty good um, 
we've now successfully switched over our guy to using a file which is really cool um, this is our entire words component pretty much I don't think we need anything else um, we'll end up commenting this guy out once we uh, get our other parts set but I think let's go ahead and just leave two there I like to leave two just doing a little cleaning here I think this is good yeah I think we're we're happy with what we got so in the next episode we will start working on our guesses and how to actually translate or take our word turn it into asterisks wherever there's letters and then output it to the user and then we'll be able to also do all our comparisons and stuff like that so I think think we're pretty good and we're at 30 minutes these episodes always seem to take a lot longer. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Aside from that, comment, like, and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter. Check out my other channels. And uh, get on my Discord. You can chat with me. I do. I'm usually invisible on it. I'll completely admit that. Um, but I always have it running in the background. Um, and I do get on it every now and then just to check because if I'm not invisible then uh, people start talking to me when I'm trying to record or something and it makes all these little sounds so I do have it invisible but I am on it um, pretty much always and I do kind of monitor it frequently so that's it guys until next time I'll be seeing you later bye